G'day friends, big episode for you today as we've got a lot to explore with the new update and expansion of City Skylines 2 this week, including bug fixes, performance fixes, paradox mods, which is an excellent step in the right direction. Even though it's in better version at the moment, I think this is great. I'm looking forward to seeing this get expanded out a little bit more. But I have to admit, I'm probably most intrigued by the Beach Properties Asset Pack. This is the very first pack that we've got and it's an interesting one. Why Beach Properties before the beaches? There's a lot of questions here, but I do want to place them down. I do want to see something a little bit different in my city. However, and this is a big however, I don't know if they really fit within my New Jersey inspired city. You know, can I really justify it? Well, I do kind of already have a bit of an idea of where I wanted to build something sort of similar. The only problem is it's not here or there or there or there. It's like all the way over here. Yeah. Not exactly just around the corner, it's pretty bloody far away and a bit of a hassle to get to. We got big large chunks of water and just islands all over the place. It's not going to be easy and I do want to connect it up to the city. I like the idea that people probably live around here and then travel all the way into the city whether that be by a highway or whether it be by a harbour or yeah that's how I'm going to connect it up by a highway and a harbour. <laughs> But I don't want to just build some chunky highway and just building big bridges across to the city. I think it's going to wind its way around some of these little places, around some of these islands and, you know, make its way like that. I like the idea of it being a bit of a journey. So you either take the windy highway or you take the harbour. You go by boat. But does that even work? Like if I build a harbour here and connect it up to the city, will people actually move in? I think we start with that. See what happens. So a bit of a beachside, self-sustained village connected up to the Big Smoke with some sort of highway and harbour. Quite little Big Smoke at the moment, looking a bit hazy off in the distance. Definitely wasn't what I had plans to build, but hey, this asset pack has inspired me, so should be pretty fun. Welcome back to New Dollarton. Alright, first things first, I want to terraform this place a bunch. I know it looks pretty fine, but it's pretty featureless. It doesn't have anything unique or interesting about the landscape. And I think that the scale of the whole place really needs just to be scaled down a notch. So pretty much all of this is going to represent all of Long Island. In fact, I reckon like this chunk of it is going to be Long Island in my universe of uh, New Dollarton. Long Island's got lots of little marshy islands and bays and beaches and little headlands and just a whole bunch of features. You know, it's got a bit of atmosphere down here, whereas down on this area, not so much. So that's the idea. And then that'll give me a good idea of whereabouts I can start building our town and uh, most importantly, where that harbour's going to sit because I'm trying to figure out the best way of connecting it up to the city. I'm sort of thinking around an area like, I don't know. I guess I've got to figure out what this place is looking like first. Alright, just trying to get the general shape of everything and I think things are starting to take shape. Although it's going to be a bit of a struggle when we don't really have anything in terms of a point of reference for scale. We do have a couple of trees that I can get a bit of an idea and this little guy down here is helping a little bit. But in general, it's a bit tricky until we start getting some roads down and some buildings as well. But a couple of things have changed since I started doing all this terraforming. Uh, I have of course fixed my graphic problem that was something to do with the TAA. I just had to switch a couple of my graphical settings here, which was a bit of a shame because I do like that TAA setting, but that's fine. I'm sure that'll get fixed pretty soon. And I also sprinkled in a whole bunch of trees around here because I wasn't using anything in terms of mods, uh, but I am now very happy to see. Let's just get back into that menu. Tree controller is now on the mod menu, which is lovely because I was using that before through the thunderstorm, and that means that I don't need to wait for all these trees to grow. So, first thing we're gonna do is get rid of all these guys. I much prefer placing my trees once I have a pretty good idea of what the landscape's going to look like, so we'll wait until that. Uh, and I'm also using preserve photo mode, which is what something I was using before. 
Uh, if you have seen what I was using when I was uh, using some mods from the Thunderstore, I'm pretty much using the same setup, but I'll go into more mods and how I'm going to be using them in probably the next episode. Um, but for now, um, I'm liking the way that the shape of this land is starting to look. I uh, do need to wait for a bit of water just to trickle in, but the general idea is that we're going to have a beach along this side. I reckon we'll probably have some mansions when we finally unlock them. And I reckon the town is going to sit somewhere around here, maybe even like up around this little bay section. And then that way we can have our port or our harbour and then we can actually uh, have our connection all the way going into the city, which um, I don't really know where that's going to sit, but we'll figure that out as well. So I've just created these mounds just on this island just as a bit of an idea of whereabouts they're going to sit and now I'm using the soften tool just to kind of go through and make it so that it's not so extreme around here because it's looking a little bit strange. Uh, I don't even know if this is the best way of doing things but I do think that this is a good way of just getting an idea of whereabouts the changes in height are going to sit. And the way that I've done this as well is I wanted it to be somewhat realistic in terms of the way that uh, the water is kind of flowing into different areas. So you can sort of see how that could potentially connect up there. Maybe it once was connected, but they've disconnected it um, as they have built up around here. And you can see where that kind of works as well. So the idea is that this is going to be kind of a bit of a marshy area, at least around these sort of areas. So uh, in saying that, I think that I might have to go down and do a bit of terraforming just to make it so that this water is totally flush with the edge of the land. And before I do that, I probably need to wait until all the water actually flows into this little bay, um, which takes a while. So let's just crank up the speed and um, I'm gonna just go make a coffee. I think that's enough. But far out, that takes a long time. I'm not even convinced that's at its complete state. I feel like it's still rising. Uh, great, a little bit of rain as well. But I feel like it's just rising up even more. But I have done multiple things, more than just a coffee. And I am starting to feel a bit impatient. I just want to get building. Okay. I think that's probably it. I don't think the water is going to change too much more than what it is at the moment. At least I really hope not because I don't want to just build a town and then for it to go underwater. So I might have to kind of raise him up a little bit, make sure it's not totally flush with the water. We'll just have to see how it goes. And it will take a little while for the water to trickle into here, but uh, the idea is to make it so that it kind of gets to a point where the water does eventually stop. And I think I'll probably end up just creating a little ridge like that, and then I can put in some trees so that it kind of does makes a really nice transition into that area. So that'll kind of flow in there, and I'll probably do the same with a little area like this. You can actually create tiny streams in City Skylands too, which is great, because you couldn't really do that with City Skylands 1. So, uh, that's a that's a total total bonus here. I really love that But I do want to just turn down the brush strength and kind of just eat into some of these little areas So that we can see a bit of the cliff coming through <laughs> I can already see this episode snowballing into a terraforming episode, but um, I'm gonna call it in a second just can't help myself I really feel like these are the necessary steps you're gonna take before diving into any types of uh, city development because you really can't change this sort of stuff once you start building those things and you kind of want all this landscape to really dictate whereabouts you build your city and your towns and your roads and all that infrastructure all this sort of stuff is kind of like built around this land so I do want to make sure this is totally how I want it and I think we're getting pretty close um, I just think we need some trees and then let's start building this thing in terms of these trees, I would like them to be kind of different to what's happening in New Dimesburg, just because I like it that you kind of travel between these different places and not only does the architecture slightly change and the type of landscape change as well, but 
Also, the trees. You might find different types of trees that have been, um, you know, planted in this area. But then if it's a big distance, then it's also, you know, the environment totally changes. Whereas I think that over here, I think that it's going to change just because it's coastal. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to go for birch, which I haven't really planted before. And the technique I'm going to go for is I'm going to go, and again, I'm using tree controller here which is a mod that you can download super easily through the mod store mod store paradox mods and i'm going to select elderly as well so that i've got two types of trees that are kind of um being placed like that and as you can see we do have that hitbox which i don't love so i'm also using anarchy which i can enable like that and that way i can go really close i'm gonna place multiple not that many thank you very much we'll go something like a hundred and I'm just gonna like sprinkle them in. Not so much on the shore front because I would like it to be a little bit different. Um, around these hills. But I'm just gonna put them in little pockets like this. And then we'll sprinkle some other different types of trees in as well. Next I'm gonna go for London Plain. I like these ones because they're fairly small and they stay relatively small as well. So we're gonna do some of them. It's important to place these ones down for me at least because I am kind of operating on like a small scale. These wild bushes are great just to add a little bit of density around some of the forested areas, especially making that transition from the forest to some of these green spaces. So I'm just kind of going in here, just sprinkling it in and really just mostly around where uh, the forest kind of meets this area. So kind of just doing that. I might even go through and add in some of these because um, even though they're kind of meant for more areas that are uh, a bit more manicured around the cities, I think that they also add in just a bit, just a, just a smidge. <laughs> it's still a little bit to desire, to be honest. I mean, we are uh, definitely lacking in terms of nature stuff with City Skylines 2, but I do also kind of like the challenge of trying to make it work, but I do miss it. This is where playing City Skylines 1 definitely is, definitely has the upper advantage. So I did have a bit of a change of heart. I have gone for a bit of a forest up on this hillside. I just feel like this will probably be a forest and will continue to be that. I might have some sprawling suburbs around here, but in terms of what environment I want to have, um, I do like the idea that in the middle, in some area like that, we will have a bit of a forest. The same for up here and the same for our headland, but everything else is kind of just a bit open. You know, just trying to get a bit of an idea of what we'll build. And we're getting pretty close to that, but I do have to say, all around here, I would like it to be pretty marshy. In terms of uh, whereabouts the landscape is looking, uh, you can see pretty much anywhere that's around here that's like pretty flush with the water, it's going to be pretty marshy. But, I mean, I'm really struggling with creating marshes in City Skylands too. I mean, it's exactly what I want to be building, you know, this whole area is going to be like that, but... Ah uh, man, I'm struggling big time. I just feel like I've chosen a really hard environment to try to create in a game that's just not really quite developed for building anything in terms of landscape and um, the environment, you know? So, I don't know. I'm going to have to try and think about that. If you've got any ideas of how I can develop that up, um, please let me know because I am going to be struggling. But I do have a bit of an idea for the beach because there are a couple of little tricks that we can do. And we'll get to that when we get to that. But for now, we should probably get to that town. I'm getting slight Blair Witch Project vibes from this road layout, but besides that, uh, things are looking pretty good. So, a couple of things to note. First of all, that hill is toast. <laughs> I now don't really have enough room for that. Uh, maybe I'll squeeze something in there, but uh, yeah, that kind of changed. And another thing is that I think that the scale of this is 
I don't know, now too small? <laughs> it went from being like too big and thinking, oh man, I've just like built another city. Uh, but now I'm thinking if this is just going to be a small town and then we're going to have some mansions and maybe something else around here, then uh, yeah, maybe this is actually a little bit too small. But we actually have the border of the whole map is right there. So we can't really extend too much further into that. And this far, I mean, there it is over there too. So we can't go too much further out that way either. Um, first, we are doing something kind of interesting down here. So this is now just becoming a bit of a key wall, a bit of a key wall, a bit of a key wall. And I like it. I don't know if I was able to do this so easily because I was using anarchy as I was dragging out these roads, but um, I am not complaining. This is looking pretty good. I was trying to trying to create the same thing over here and it wasn't really working out because the height difference is just not great enough. But I've got an idea. I do like the idea that we do have a key and a road and then below we do have a bit of land and I reckon that'll be a bit marshy too, you know, just uh, leaving a bit of space for a floodplain. But I think that I can create the same thing. This way we can actually do the height difference. So if I just terraform all of this and then hopefully now I can drag this out and yeah, so I was able to do that so easily because I was using anarchy. So I'm going to enable that again. We'll just drag him out. And then I can just terraform our land back and that way I can create a bit of a marshy little wetland down here and the road is all elevated just in case we get a bit of flooding which we are getting right now so kind of nice timing. Jeez, I really hope we get something in terms of just more environmental stuff, you know, because that is like my biggest struggle at this point, just trying to make things look a little bit more um, realistic in terms of the environment. Um, but I'm just going to kind of do a bit of that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. See how that kind of looks. I might wait and see if it grows me. But for now, it's um, a bit of forestry industry, just kind of changing the ground color. Um, I did the same thing over in New Dimesburg. Um, it kind of works, although, yeah, of course, we have nothing in terms of services. Uh, we should probably build that up. So the grid's actually looking kind of even, which is nice. I've got good cells which are popping up. Um, however, I do think that I've made the actual blocks too large. Uh, this would work if it's in the city, but because we are kind of out in the sticks at this stage, I think that I do need to make them a little bit smaller. So now I've kind of uh, messed up my cells a little bit, but uh, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go an alley because these alleys are great. Oop, that's nice. Thank you. Uh, these are nice just to kind of scale things back ever so slightly. So I'm going to connect all these guys up like that. That works. I'm actually having second thoughts about this road layout. I kind of feel like it's a bit disconnected from the landscape. I think that it kind of needs to follow a little bit more of the shoreline of this island rather than just kind of conforming to whatever this uh, little little thing is. What is it? A lake. I guess a little lake. So what I'm going to do instead, um, even though I kind of like this diagonal guy, I think I'm going to get rid of him. And then we should probably just get rid of that and I might even remove all of these roads so that we can kind of change the direction of the grid when it kind of interacts with this main road. Because that's what this road is. This is a main road as it stretches throughout this town. Okay, let's leave it at that because I think that's a pretty good starting point. It's a bit messy in areas, which I like. Uh, we do have a couple of main roads. We've got one stretching out this way, which I think will be the road that we connect up to New Dimesburg. Then we've also got another one that kind of is going to stretch around here. This guy is going towards this little section. And then we've got this kind of heading off over here. So we've got a couple of points of interest that I think that the roads are stretching towards. But I think that's enough for the roads for now. Let's get into some of these houses. 
So maybe I'm alone here, but I actually found it kind of surprising that these waterfront houses were kind of just in amongst all the rest of the houses. I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I wasn't expecting this, but this does make sense. Um, I guess back in City Skylines one days, you would probably find this as some sort of building theme. Uh, that's how a lot of um, new buildings like this were kind of introduced. So I sort of expected just to kind of like create a district and um, that way we could create these waterfront houses. But of course, this makes sense. They're all part of the different diversity in terms of housing, which is kind of cool because I guess, I don't know, at some point we're going to have multiple uh, different types of housing that we can, well, multiple different types of all of these things will all just kind of sit amongst here and we'll probably have to like scroll through all of these different sections, which is kind of exciting, isn't it? You know, think about all these different types of icons we're going to find as uh, the game gets a little bit more fleshed out and developed up. So I don't know, just something that surprised me. I don't think it's going to surprise many other people, but it definitely surprised me. So I'm going to zone them up now. Um, this works pretty well. Look at that. All right, let's just do a bit of this. No, get out of here. Let's do this. That's better. No, come on, like this. There we go. Probably should have done two by two, but whatever, it's fine. These guys can have slightly larger ones. And I think we'll probably do threes as well over here. Power and water, okay, that makes sense. First of all, for power, I think that we should probably go for one of these big coal power plants and I reckon we just chuck it somewhere around here. No, I'm joking. We're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, we're going to go for wind turbine. You know, it's a nice little place. I don't want to just uh, pollute him up with some big old factories. So, well, mind you, I'm probably going to put some factories somewhere. But where are we going to place some of these? Because they're actually much larger than I kind of expected. So could place them around here or maybe over here hmm hmm I am actually really struggling where I'm going to be placing this it's not just about the, generating the most amount of power because if I wanted to do that I'd probably place it up on one of these uh, hills up here but I just feel like it's too large you know it kind of really makes the rest of this whole island look much smaller than it really is plus I kind of feel like I want to be placing something else up there so I don't want to do that I don't really want to place them there I just kind of hold on what can I place them on water am I only just discovering this can I place it yeah perhaps if I buy up another chunk of land let's go there I don't know how I didn't know about that, but that is very, very cool. So now we are producing power. Uh, these are the only power stations uh, within the whole of New Dollarton. So we should probably fix that at some point, but for now it's fine. Uh, we are producing power. I wonder what this would look like if I just made it so it didn't snap and kind of place it around. Oh. Because you know what I mean? It kind of looks interesting just kind of poking out there. So I do want to try and make it work. We do need this road connection. So if I maybe plonk it there. Yeah, still complaining about a road connection. I mean, it's a little bit interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I don't know how you feel about that. Um, I kind of like it. And then we'll just dump our sewage over there. Don't tell anyone. And that is it. That's all we needed. So let's check out these little properties we got here. Okay, pretty cool. I mean, they're nice models and I actually think they fit in pretty well with what is gonna be going on around here. Uh, I thought they were going to be a little bit more Mediterranean than this. I guess the European version of the beachside properties is going to be a little bit more Mediterranean, but I think that this kind of works. Uh, a little bit repetitive on this side, so I think we might ha actually have to kind of sprinkle in a little bit of um, variation um, in terms of the sizes, but I do kind of like the style of the houses. Now the props, of course, do leave a lot to be desired, so I don't love that. But it's nice to see fences all the way at the back. It's nice to see just like 
detail that makes sense, you know, all these bits and pieces are all in the right place, you know? Sometimes you find a lot of very random looking props just kind of sprinkled around. And plus, even the trees themselves kind of make sense too. I will be going through and adding in some larger trees because I think that they are way too small. But in terms of the style of buildings that I wanted to grow around here, so far, so good. However, I do think that we've only really got residential in terms of uh, new buildings. Um, and I think that's a little bit sad because I think that the commercial zones actually lack the most amount of content, um, at least variation and even model detail. I think that these models really don't look great and we're about to get a good taste of them as well. Yeah, I think if they were going to really justify this being a true beachside properties pack, then I think that they really needed to include some commercial. I can understand the lack of industry. Yeah, that's fine. But I just feel like we definitely, definitely needed something in terms of commercial. Like a lot of these buildings, they're fine, but I don't know. They also don't work in every context. Like, look, we've already got three of the same building right there. Um, and that's probably the same building too. On a positive note though, I do think that these houses are quite nice. Um, they are more East Coast than I expected. I sort of expected them to be, you know, purely very Mediterranean, very um, Californian. Um, I do think that they could easily be zoned in some sort of inner city, you know? So me, me just sort of saying that these can only really work on the beach side, um, I don't think so. I actually think you could quite easily zone these up um, anywhere within your city because they are somewhat generic, but I mean like, so is all housing. So just because it's called beachside properties doesn't mean that it's purely left for the beachside because I sort of feel like this works anywhere. Um, but I, I do think that these are pretty good models. Is it worth forking out for this DLC? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think it's a bit of a stretch. I think maybe wait till people start making some um, actual assets on the um, on the Paradox mods because I think that's going to be probably a little bit more worthwhile. But I'm probably just happy just to see some variation. Not that you can really tell from up here. We well, you know what would have been really great? Some apartments. Chuck in some, just some more beachside apartments. And I feel like then you could really capture the beachside properties uh, vibe with some extra apartments. Then that would be really quite amazing. You could even chuck in some of these guys, some mixed zoning. That would be awesome. And we haven't even got into those trees. Yeah, those trees, the ones that I have to push that. <laughs> and now I can see these trees. Sweet. Yeah. Nice looking trees. And I will be placing down some palm trees. The reason why I didn't include them all throughout this forest is because I feel like these are definitely introduced to this area. You know, like this is East Coast, New York we're talking about. This isn't really um, palm tree weather, though we will see some palm trees. Uh, they're more the ones that have kind of been introduced as uh, these places have kind of uh, tried to be a little bit more tropical or at least tried to go for a bit more of a holiday vibe. Uh, but they're not really, they're not native. But I do like that. That's kind of cool. Let's place a couple of them. All right, this is looking pretty cool. Just sprinkling in some trees. Because I've got anarchy enabled, I can just place in trees wherever I like, which is really helping. I'm just going through and adding in some trees, especially around the fences. What am I looking for here? There we go. Especially around the fences, where you usually have a little bit more privacy. And these places have been here for a while, so, you know, some of these bushes are really kind of um, nice and big. Uh, I've also gone through and just made this lot vacant and I think I'm going to do the same for this guy over here as well. You know, you do find some vacant lots every now and again, so I'll do that for this one. Done it for that one because it's a bit of an awkward shape anyway. So now it doesn't really look quite as awkward because nothing sits there. Um, but what is also cool, I don't know if this is something that was like that before, whether this was introduced with the update, but a lot of these places have got for sale signs. Again, am I only just noticing this now, or has this been something uh, that's been there for a while? <laughs> I don't know, um, but it's kind of cool. 
but I am liking the way this is looking, but you might also notice that no one lives here <laughs> because uh, no one can get here. This is totally removed from everything else, no connection whatsoever. So nobody is moving in. In fact, if I click on these houses, no residents exist, which is kind of cool. And these shops, no one can shop there. So I think we need to start figuring out how we're gonna connect this little place up with this big place. And I think a harbor is something that I think we should start with because will they spawn cars? I don't really know, let's find out. The thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is the fact that um, it might be a little bit big for this whole place and okay, it's big but it's not, it's not ridiculous. I think this will work. Originally, I was thinking it could sit around here. Oh, I could place it in there. Oh, I don't know. I kind of want to do it, but I also feel like it's uh, maybe a little bit too much. First of all, do these boats look like cruise ships? Let's figure that out first. They're kind of more just like big ferries. Kind of somewhere between a cruise ship and a ferry. I think probably the right size for a trip like this. But can I justify and can I get away with... A big boat like that going into a bit of a small bay like this. I think, I think I'm just going to do it. But we do need to do a bit of work around here. I need to give a little bit more of a passage for boats to get in. And it might not even be possible. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll just have to, we'll just have to have a little crack. It's in and I love it. <laughs> this is a great idea. Um, whether or not it's realistic or not, whatever. I really like it. Um, what I want to do here is, um, and purely accidental, but kind of making another little key. And I think it should just wind its way around here and connect up to this one. And what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, I really wish I could get rid of that sidewalk, you know, that would be kind of fun, but I can't. So that's fun. I want it to be windy. A couple of little bends in it. Okay, that's kind of working. Oh, no it's not. Alright, this is good. I'm really liking this. So I should probably connect this up before I do anything more because we are already running in, into some problems over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect up our harbour to the city and we're going to see, let's just do a narrow seaway because this is going to be a pretty narrow space. Uh oh, I haven't thought about something. I need to connect to this. Actually, hold on. Am I even able to do this? Okay, so I don't have enough map tiles to connect up to the city at the moment. I need to get a few more. So what's gonna happen? I think, oh man, why didn't I think about this before? I do have enough map tiles to connect up to our outside connection. So let's just do that for now. Purchase. This now makes things extra interesting. We are now only connected to an outside connection. We are not connected to New Dimesburg at all. So I have to kind of wait until we have more expansion points. I do, I need to go through some more milestones, at least one more. Hopefully that'll get me enough, um, enough expansion points so I can actually connect up our harbor to the rest of the city. And then we'll just have to see how that goes. But for now we are connected, but we're not Truly connected. I think we have to do a passenger line. But would that actually move people in? Or will it just transport tourists? I honestly don't know at this point. I'm going to speed things up 
We'll see what happens, but regardless, I'm going to need some expansion points. And I'm only going to get them when I hit the next milestone. And that is not too far away. I'm over halfway there. Oh, here comes the first guy. Zero passengers. Wonderful. I actually really love that. I love the fact that he's just going through here. Uh, very cool. Maybe we make it a little bit wider. Or not. I don't know yet. Ten people, three dogs. Here we go. How interesting. So the job shortage out this way has already been fixed. We already have employees, even though nobody lives in these places. Actually, hold on. People do live here? What? How do you guys live here? That makes no sense. Unless... Are they traveling? Interesting. People are already moved in. Well, not officially moved in, but they live here even though they are currently within the city. So nobody has actually stepped foot on our little island except for these guys, wherever they are. Ah, here they are. Almost half as many dogs live here as people, but um, that's so fine. I'm okay about that. And no one's brought their cars along, so everyone is forced to walk around. <laughs> uh, I love that. So, you know what? Maybe we'll just live this way for a little while and people can just uh, kind of deal with the fact that we've got all these roads but no cars to use them with. But that definitely will get old pretty quickly, so uh, I'm going to expand. I'm going to be placing down a whole bunch of different services because I do want this to be very self-contained and at the moment if a fire was to break loose we would be in a lot of trouble and there is nothing in terms of education, there's nothing in terms of anything except for the most basic of services. So I'm going to fly through a bit of that, expand and I think we might hit a couple of just the next one, hopefully. <music> Oh yeah, we are getting somewhere. I am loving the way that this little place is starting to turn out. There's still a little bit more work to do on it though, but I don't think I'm going to get that far in today's episode. And I'm certainly not going to be able to connect him up with a road because we're still quite a while away. So I'm going to have to just continue working on that. And to be honest, I'm kind of liking the fact that it's just doing its own thing. It still needs a bit of work. 
and I do want to see more people kind of in here. Actually, I actually don't even know what the population is at the moment, so we'll check that out in a second. Um, but something interesting is happening. We do indeed have cars. I don't know how, like, how do you have a car? That doesn't make any sense. They, I think they built them? Like, this one looks handcrafted, but, oh, maybe not so. I thought there was rust at the front, but that's a flame. It's a fully sick flame. I mean, it's a small car, um, but yeah. I mean, the police cars I can understand, but I don't really understand how these guys are just turning up. So you got any ideas why that's happening? Uh, please hit me up, but yeah, it's kind of, kind of strange and a little bit annoying because it's kind of means that pocket cars do exist. You know, they can just spawn in a car if they kind of need it. Maybe they got stuck and reset to a, a car person, a person with a car, but I don't know, they exist. Um, it's kind of fine, but then also kind of annoying. And I guess in the long run, it doesn't really matter because we are gonna connect it up with a road at some stage, um, but not today, probably in the next one. Uh, I keep on referring to this as just a little town, but I'm gonna name it up. Yeah, I know, I'm just gonna go rogue and I'm gonna name up this whole place. Hawthorne Terrace. Uh, I don't think so. As a bit of a nod to that Seinfeld episode where Jerry and Elaine and George get dragged to that party on Long Island. But the host of that party was Steve and Jenny. So I'm gonna call this place Jenny. Yeah. And what do we got? 625 people. Cool. A couple of little things that I've been working on. I have been just adding in lots of sprawling neighborhoods along the outside of town just because I feel like um, these can be kind of cool when we've got some uh, a bit more swampiness all around this waterway, which I'll probably add in the next one. And I've just been adding in that, which I do quite like. And the same with over this area, which um, I feel like has smaller houses, um, more of these cottages. But I do like it that we do have like a bit of a change between this side and then this side. Kind of just shows that there are like differences even within a pretty small space. I've also been raising up some of these hills too, just to kind of um, create a couple of points of interest. I feel like it's a little bit more interesting when you have some um, mountains surrounding your town and you know obviously Long Island isn't quite as hilly but I really like this. I mean this doesn't probably really reflect too much of anything that's over in Long Island but uh, that's fine. Sometimes it's nice to do your own thing. Um, something I do want to do though is uh, we do have a couple of roads that are just kind of pointing in directions but they're not connecting to anything. So this road in particular, I think, and I'm just gonna start winding him up, um, but I think he's gonna end up around here. Why do I keep saying I think? Of course he is. It's pretty hilly around here, so I'm gonna take the windy way up, kind of stick into the valleys, and just winding along the ridge here. Uh, I'm not trying to cut too much into the mountainside, and I think we'll probably do a bit of this, and maybe even a bit of this. And unfortunately, I actually don't have anything in mind. Like, what can I even place up in an area like this? I don't really know. And again, if this was City Skylines 1, I'd have lots of things to place down. But um, for this one, not really anything. <laughs> I don't really have anything I can place. So if you've got some ideas, let me know. Um, but at the moment, it's just kind of one in its way up there. And I had something in mind for along here. I would like to encourage some larger buildings, but I'm actually having a hard time actually seen anything that large grow you see it's annoying because I know large buildings exist but for some reason they just don't want to grow <sighs> well I have seen a mod plop the growables is now available on the steam workshop so maybe that'll be the next one that I get because uh, I would actually like to <laughs> I'd actually like to choose the types of buildings that are growing around here and um, at the moment, I don't really have much control on that. So this is about as big as it gets, but I do know we have much larger buildings that are able to grow. So let's just stick to these guys. That's still pretty big, I guess. <laughs> Not exactly the flash mansions I was after, but I guess they are level one at the moment. So we'll just let them level up a little bit. Um, but I actually don't think I can help myself. I think, I think one of the last things I want to do is, I think I want to extend out just some of the marshland. Oh, ho, ho. a lot's to be desired, that's for sure. Oh man, but it'll, it'll do. It'll do for now. But man, modders, 
All right, now's your time to shine. I am absolutely hanging out for just some tools just to create some more realistic looking environments because uh, I think that's what's kind of like hold me back at this moment from like going full blown all over City Skylines 2. Because at the moment I'm kind of like, yeah, this is like fun and I'm enjoying aspects of it, but the parts that I can do that are fun, are fun. But for these sort of parts, I just want to be able to create just some more marshland, please. Oh dear. Looks like I have indeed forgotten to place down a couple of services. Uh, a medical clinic, I think these guys would appreciate that. I'm sure that's holding, um, holding up our land value quite a bit. And then for death care, I... Ooh, is it snowing? Oh, okay. That might be nice. Hoo hoo hoo, getting pretty frosty. Uh, it's looking pretty cool. I like it. Except for the fact that um, our trees don't really have any snow on them. Except, do some of them have snow on them? Those ones have full coverage, but some of the other ones don't. Um, but the buildings have some snow on them. That's great. But the grass does not. Hey, uh, come on, City Skylines 2. I want to love you because this just doesn't look great. Like, come on. Not good enough. It's, uh, you know, I just have to, like, speed run through winter because this isn't pleasing to look at. Yeah, great that the trees now have snow on them, but, like, completely? It's a little bit... It's a little bit too much. And not even these guys. Ugh, come on. I mean, it's like what I said in the video last week. There are just so many things that I love. You know, I've just built this town. I love it. I'm really enjoying how all this is coming together. But then it starts to snow and it gets really cool. You know, parts of it get cool, but then it also kind of looks a bit ridiculous. Too white. And then you see what games like Manor Lords and prehistoric kingdom are doing with their weather and their environment and you go well it's so possible and they've been really taking their time creating those games and I know they took their time creating this one but it just it just leaves a lot to love a lot to a lot to be designed not a lot to not a lot to love there is a lot to love but it's also like come on all right let's just speed through this and there goes the snow Oh man, all right. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today's episode. Sorry to grumble a little bit, but you know, it's just frustrating when you love so much of this game, but then it's hard to love parts of it, you know? And I'm sure you're all in the same boat. Uh, lots of, lots of puns going on here, but love it. Love this game. Love the way that this came together, but man, just some aspects, come on. And then these houses are great. They look really, really cool. But I don't think you can justify getting them at this stage because, I mean, they would fit fantastic for a beachside resort town, you know, with all beaches and uh, hotels and even like apartments that fit the theme. But, you know, just by themselves, without beaches, with a couple of palm trees, it's not really enough, to be honest. Um, so I'd probably save your money. I like the fact that they're here, but hey, I... I still think you should probably keep your money. <laughs> um, hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I will try and get a video out this weekend um, and finish off this little area. I like to kind of work on the beaches and I know beaches, but I say beaches. I've got a bit of a technique that I'm going to give a crack at and use a couple of mods and hopefully we'll achieve some sort of beach. But I'm mostly keen just to check out some of these mansions and connect up our little town of Jenny to the rest of the city with a bit of a highway. A bit of a road. I think she probably needs it. But guys, a big thank you all for watching and a big shout out to my lovely patrons supporting the channel and making videos like this possible. Stills, Flyware, Ronald Booker, KC27, Mermet Ali Bariskin, SP, Impulse Music, Glocks Gaming, Crim Noise, and Robert Green. Cheers legends, see you all in the next one.